We're back. Huh. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Dr. Rock. Here with I'm my <laughs> yeah, here with my illustrious colleague Christina Lascano. We are we are from Mora Medical. And if you're watching this live, if you're watching this recorded, welcome, welcome to our weekly live stream. We do this Wednesdays at 11 a.m. Pacific and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we always appreciate um, people watching whenever you watch. And if you are watching live, we appreciate you uh, feeling free to ask any questions in the chat um, and sharing your thoughts about the topic we're going to talk about today. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, just remind everyone who we are. We're more medical. Christina, you want to tell our guests, uh, our watchers, a little bit about our medical group? Yeah, so we are Mora Medical. We're a lifestyle medicine telehealth company. So we see all of our patients remotely. Um, the nice thing about that is we can see people all over. Um, right now, we're we're um, able to see patients in Florida, Texas, California, and then starting in a few other states coming soon. Um, but we really help people to um, improve their health and improve their quality of life through lifestyle modifications. So. Um, if you're interested, you can go to our website, mora.com, and sign up for a um, consultation with us. That's right. And we're also joined here by Dr. Lori Marbus. Dr. Lori is our chief medical officer here at Mora Medical. Hey guys. How are you doing today, Dr. Good. Lori? Good. Sorry I'm late. It's like back-to-back -back meetings and <laughs> go live. <laughs> Here and we are. Still alive. Here we are. Well, we know a lot of people are watching these uh, recorded as well. So I want to say thank you to anyone if you're watching live or recorded. And um, we were going to get into today's topic. Today's topic is setbacks. Setbacks. And that word itself sounds like a setback when I say it. Um, so I'll, you know, how to deal with setbacks, particularly on your health journey, right? And and so I'll, I'll open it up there. And I don't know if anyone has any thoughts about that word even, like what that means to you. Um, well, you know, setbacks can be in a lot of things. Um, it's almost a, the negative connotation means that you are sacrificing something or have something negative. But I feel like there's always a lesson to be learned. And then mm. I, you know, we all know that 2020 is perfect perfect vision, right? If we only could have 2020 clarity moving forward in our lives, well, we wouldn't have these problems or these conversations. <laughs> but uh, the setback piece, I feel if we just reframe it and say, what is the lesson in learning of this? I would say you're just kind mm. of stepping back, not necessarily setback, but stepping back to have a bigger picture look and say, okay, I'm getting a little bit of clarity so I can narrow my my journey and make my path a little bit easier moving forward. So what is that lesson I need to learn from this setback in the sense? Um, I hope that makes sense. Hmm. It makes perfect sense. But by the way, when you were saying 2020 and you were talking about 2020 vision, like having clarity and yeah. I, for mo initially I thought you were talking about the year 2020 and yeah, I was like, oh yeah, too. that was a huge <laughs> setback for everyone. You know, like that's how, we looked at, you know, we felt it. It was a, it was a step back in many respects. But first, I wanted to differentiate, and maybe Christina, you have thoughts about this, about like kind of the degree of setback. Like you sort of think about. Um, I, I tell my kids this sometimes when they're upset. I say, "Is it a big problem or a small problem? Like, <laughs> is this something you really, really need to be upset? At? Like, never need to be upset, but you see what I'm saying? Like, how much?" of our mind creates the mm. intensity or immensity of the setback. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that goes back, like you just, you just kind of mentioned that our, sometimes we'll have a setback and our mind goes to this, oh, this is, this is a catastrophic <laughs> event that has happened. You know, I can't believe I've, you know, backslid so much. Um, but when we look at the evidence, as Dr. Mm. Marvis mentioned, we've, probably learned a lot from that and really stepping back, I think, and, and comparing it to maybe how things were before you started learning more about, you know, your health and, and comparing it to that. And you'll probably realize that you're, you're a few steps ahead of that even. Um, and, and realizing that maybe it's not the end of the world and you can get right back on it tomorrow or today, even 
you know, for dinner um, um, or, you know, get back out there and go for a walk or, um, you know, and there's other setbacks too that aren't just about our lifestyle change. There's, you know, injuries that happen and, and different things like that, but also looking at the evidence and, you know, I most likely will get better from this. You know, I have the resources that I need, the doctors that I need to, to get better. And so um, I think stepping back and looking at the evidence would be my, and then, yeah. and then, Caring, like how how significant is this and what do I need to do going mm. forward? Yeah. Mm, yeah. That okay. that's like a very um, practical way to look at the situation. Like look at it what really is happening, not what how I'm as you said, ca catastrophizing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, good. Um, we have a question. Anne asks, I'm not sure if I'm if maybe there was a typo, Anne wrote, what if my setback is always bread? What should the person be doing to prevent or prepare to not have it happen? I wonder if the word bread, I'm not sure. I think she means bread, like sliced bread. Mm. Yeah, like that's yeah. Oh, eating bread, yeah, sure. Yeah, like yeah. That's, oh. yeah. so okay. bread, it's a delicious setback, but <laughs> sometimes people like to eat a lot of it, so maybe that's where she's struggling. Yeah, and actually, I mean, bread's a good example of a, I mean, especially if it's made with refined flour, it's basically an addictive substance. So what she should the person be doing to prevent or prepare to not have it happen? Well, She says it's sourdough, and sourdough's delicious. Sourdough is delicious. <laughs> And sourdough is, oh, it is bread. Okay. And I feel, yeah. Okay. I feel you. So we always talk about this a lot is like one, just your environment. Um, you know, if you have a, if you feel like you have a problem with bread, then who's bringing bread into the home and seriously. And like, if it's you, like, where are those points where you're like passing by the store or the bakery or, um, just thinking about that, uh, having it in your environment or not. I don't know. Do you guys have any thoughts? Yeah. So, you know, like Chef AJ, and I will always credit her with this. If it's in your house, it's in your mouth. And so she says it's not in the house, but where she's shopping. So, you know, if you're out shopping, it's like those, um, someone says, I love bread. So now I eat angelic bakehouse bread that's has with me because it is so tasty and is good for you because it's all whole wheat. Yes. And so you can make healthier version choices. Like, so, you know, like the Ezekiel breads, those are basically sprouted grain breads. So if it's a matter of caloric intake, you're like, man, I eat six slices and all this versus like a couple, you know, you can see health benefits from certain types of bread. But like you said, it's that refined grain that becomes the issue. Raises blood sugars. So like bagels well, might be a little bit harder to qualify that as a healthier bread choice. But um, one, yes, if you're already keeping it out of your environment, fantastic. But then it's a matter of when you go shopping, prepare. So you have a list and also eat a healthy meal prior to shopping. And what they found is that you'll make 40% better, healthier choices. One, you've already made the decision because you have a list on your the menus that this is what we're going to buy. It's much easier to stay focused on the list. You check out the list, you go to the checkout. <laughs> and then the second piece is that if you've eaten and you've eaten healthy food, you're in the mindset of I'm doing something healthy. I'm going to remain healthy versus going when you're hungry. And then you're like looking at all these things. You know, if there's little girls selling those little thin mint cookies, <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm yeah. done for. Buying the whole box, the box. They're gone. vegan, Lori. Didn't you know that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> vegan they're must vegan mean they're healthy. And in my tummy. So, yeah. you know, these are the things that happen. So um, I literally will avoid stores that have those. And they're cute, right? I'm a mom. I love little kids. I want to support them. I just, and I love entrepreneurship. And you're selling. You're, yeah. Yeah. I can rationalize anything. You name it. <laughs> but that's, that's uh, basically what has to happen, but this is how strong these triggers are, right? So someone may think about bread. They, then they start smelling it. Then they mm. salivate me just picturing the box. I'm telling you, it's something about that chocolate minty. I'm already salivating. Like I'm already like, when's February coming? Or I think it's when they start selling these things. And I'm like, this is how strong these foods can have hold of us. And I may eat this once every five years. Right. So it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. And if, if I might also, I, I, I think there's another 
Well, there's another piece. I think a lot of times if you, if your rule is you tell yourself, I can't have bread, I can't have bread, I can't have bread. Then there's innate part of you that wants to rebel against that. That just says, I can't, this corporal rule isn't working for me. I'm going to be myself and eat bread. Mm. And so there's a couple strategies I think about, and I talk with patients about one is framing it, not that you can't do it, but that you don't do it. And so suddenly it becomes like, oh, this is my choice. This is something I choose not to do because, and then you have to, you have to be very clear. Like, why don't you do it? You know, so this is an opportunity to reflect on why, why you want to be healthy, but also why in particular, why don't I eat bread? Oh, because when I eat it, I, I just keep eating it and I, I reach for bagels too. And then I feel terrible afterwards. You know, whatever that reason is for you, be clear about that. Remind yourself of that, actually. Remind yourself of that because... We learn these, these habits because these foods are addictive. And so we learn them. And so to counteract them, we need repetition too. And so that's one, that's the kind of mindset piece. And then if you are rebelling against a rule, at, just like Dr. Lori was saying, like, is there a way you can incorporate bread in a healthy way and have an expectation? Oh, I am going to have bread. And one of my favorite bread products is the Ezekiel, the Food for Life English muffin, the cinnamon raisin English mm. muffin. I eat <laughs> every day. And so they're, not, they're a little expensive, but it, they're much cheaper than if you got a bagel at any like restaurant. or So in that way, and they're fluffy inside. And, you know, I keep them in the freezer, but I probably don't even need to because <laughs> a week in the fridge is probably fine. But okay. Yeah. I keep mine in the fridge um, and you could toast them. But, you know, she mentioned she's a type two diabetic and she said bread is off the menu at home, but smells. So you're almost like you're depriving yourself. Right. And then when you do go out, your brain has been going up and deprived and deprived and deprived. I'm going to go hunt it down. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to. So you're really your willpower wanes. Right. Because you're constantly fighting. So my suggestion uh, would be I don't know if you have a continuous glucose monitor or whatever, but it would be an interesting experiment to get the Ezekiel type bread, have it at home, right? And give yourself guardrails. Say, I do this once a day. This is my treat. But punctuate that with eat a salad first, make it a small part of a meal with mm. high, high non-starchy vegetables heading off. So you won't get that rising glucose, even if you do get it, some type of a bit of a rise with the sprouted green bread. So now you can enjoy it. You don't have that deprivation. And I think what will happen is when you go out into the world, you're like, I've got my bread at home that feeds me and, and, and feeds my soul, feeds my body, nourishes me. I don't need this other stuff, right? Because now you haven't been depriving yourself or using that willpower. To, like, I can't do it. You know, so I think that might be helpful. Um, just some ideas that might work for you. Yeah. And and and, and the, the, uh, she wrote back, I'm type 2 diabetic. Oh, she said, um, Ezekiel bread is okay. Um, question mark, question mark. Um yeah, yeah. Christina, what, do you want to tell our viewers about Ezekiel bread and, and why it might be? Yeah. Yeah, so Ezekiel bread, um, the nice thing about it is it's all whole grains, sprouted whole grains. Um, it's definitely something that we have in our home on occasion. Um, they have a number of different great products. They've, they've got the English muffins that Dr. Rock is mentioning that are fantastic. Um, they also have bread. Um, they've got like flax bread, which is great because it's, I like the flax ones because then you get the added benefit of the flax seeds, which are helpful for cholesterol and blood pressure control as well. Um, they also have wraps that you can buy. Okay. So if you want to have like a, you know, you're craving like a taco or a wrap of some hummus wrap or something like that. Those are fantastic for that. Um, and they also have cereal now, I found. Um, they mm. have like a cereal. Um, and I got it recently. And that's actually really good. I put with soy milk. Um, and it's high in protein. Um, and then it's all whole grains. And then when you look at the ingredient list, you know, a lot of times when you look at ingredient lists on breads and cereals, there's all these things you can't pronounce and you know, who knows what it is. Um, but this, you can, every single one of the ingredients, you know, it's like barley and wheat and all of these fantastic whole grains. So there's no, no preservatives or anything like that in it. So that's another reason why it's so fantastic. Um, and then I think they the have cinnamon raisin too. 
which she liked. Yes. She mentioned. So. Yeah, the cinnamon yeah. raisin. <laughs> cinnamon raisin English muffin um, was my husband's favorite for a long time. He switched to oatmeal, but um, that was his breakfast yeah. every day. <laughs> so we would keep ours yeah. in the freezer and then put them in the um, toaster. In the toaster. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it was really delicious. So, you know, I, I think I really like everything you said, Christine, because that's true, right? It's like it's the whole grain. It's a sprouted whole grain. And you like mentioned that. And I love that the cereal piece, too. I was going to have to try that. But again, this just goes back to incorporating healthier, the healthiest version of something. So that trying to remove the deprivation mindset is just right. so critical. Um, <clears throat> and if you are a type 2 diabetic, you know, if you're not already in a whole food plant based diet, this is another way to move the needle, right? So the more the fiber, the better, the lower the saturated fats in your diet, the better. So those numbers will improve. And so you become less, you know, you're more insulin sensitive, right? And less insulin non, you know, where you're um, struggling to process the insulin. And you may even be able, I don't, I don't know your story, but you may be even able to decrease medications or reverse the type two diabetes. So um, if you are in California, Texas, Florida, Colorado, Ohio, or New York, you know, you should maybe uh, make an appointment with one of our doctors at more.com and you'll be happy to help. Um, so again, there's, there's that piece too. So the more fiber, the better, once the sugars walking after a meal. So let's say you do eat some bread, <laughs> you notice it goes up half an hour after eating gives the stomach time to digest, go for a walk. Using those large muscles will lower your blood sugar. So that's another little trick to stuff. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> There's oh. one other thing I just thought I would mention um, there too, is if you like, cause I think we're talking about setbacks, right? So yeah. if you do end up going out and you eat the bread, let's just get, have that as a scenario. Um, and then like, I think rock mentioned earlier, like sometimes we'll spiral out, you know, after mm -hmm. that, it's like, Oh, I had, I had the, the bread out at this restaurant. And so now I'm going to go have a bagel and I'm going to then, you know, do X, Y, and Z throughout the day. And sometimes we don't get back started on our whole food plant-based diet or whatever our health goals are till the next day, or maybe even the next week. Um, one of our PAs, Catherine at Mora has this great analogy. And so I want to share it. It's called the red or the stoplight analogy. So um, if you were to be driving, right, you like drive and you, <laughs> you drive through a red light, okay, or a stoplight, you would be like, oh my gosh, like, I can't believe mm -hmm. I just drove through that. I, you know, that was very dangerous. I can't believe I was so just, I must have been distracted. So the rest of your drive home, right, we're on high alert. We're like, okay, focus, no distraction, no one talk to me, right? Um, until you get home and you're like, okay, I'm so glad I'm, I got home safe. We don't decide, okay, I'm going to run through, I got through that one. So I'm going to just run through the rest for the rest of the day, or maybe even the rest of the week. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So, so it's just kind of a similar analogy. Like we would never do that, but it's the same kind of thing with um, whatever health, you know, lifestyle change we're trying to make. If we make one decision that maybe isn't on our meal plan or our health, you know, what we want to be eating, say, you know, it's okay. And move forward and say, this is a new moment. Today's a new, today's a new day or dinner is going to be a new meal. And then just try to move forward instead of kind of spiraling out of, out, not out of control, but sometimes we do. I mean, I've been there <laughs> um, and I'm sure most patients have. Um, so that's just like an al analogy to think of when you get to that point. It, it kind of reminds me, Christina, what you're describing is like all or nothing thinking. So yeah. it's like now, now that I had this thing, I guess I'm just eating the, this <laughs> now. Like, yeah. Or now that I did this on a Saturday, I guess all weekend I'm <laughs> right. That's no longer, I don't know. And yeah, that, give, that goes, I think back to your sometimes just rebelling against Mm -hmm. um, rules you've created for yourself, which is Dr. Lori says, like, that's not a sustainable punishment is not a sustainable way. Deprivation is not a sustainable way. You know, when you start asking yourself the question, like, what can I do to feel good? Like, how can this feel good for me? How can this be fun for me? How can this mm -hmm. be enjoyable for me? Then you start designing behaviors that look way different than when you were asking, how can I restrict myself? How can I punish myself? 
Yeah, you know, and um, I had a really cool conversation with Yashoda yesterday, Dr. Yashoda Basker, one of our docs, and she's in, she's, she's always, she's sharing some of the greatest articles with us. She finds books and things that, videos that I've, I've learned so much just from her interactions. And she mentioned uh, a thing called ACT, and this kind of res resonated what you're saying, Rock, and it's called Accept Commit Therapy. Anyway, there's a whole thing about, mm -hmm. I, I, she, I'm, literally just learned about it yesterday, but she talks about value-based decisions. Mm -hmm. And this kind of makes sense to kind of what you're describing is like, instead of, you know, saying, I'm going to do this for my goal, for whatever, but where, where does it meet up with your values? So what do you, what have you distilled your values to you as a person? There are two, three major core values, right? And then how does this fit in line, align with your values? And I think if you've made that decision and made that cognitive you know journey between a and b like this goal or this decision is based because it aligns with this value that'll make it easier to stick with it in the long term um when you're being mindful of the choices that you're making on a day-to-day -day basis but yeah that's just check it out it was a act therapy a dr stephen hayes and the dr russ harris there's some cool stuff apparently <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've been talking with my groups about making choices mm. in the last week, actually, just this. Um, and how, you know, the, I, the ideal choice very often isn't possible. It, it may be. And this, I, Christina and I were talking about this mm. yesterday. I said, this is like the downside of habits, because habits require like an a unchanging context. And our context is always changing. Mm. So actually, what we're doing in, very, in, in various moments is making choices. And if we can make choices that align with our values, just like you said, then they won't be necessarily the perfect choice, but, uh, but they'll be a choice that's right for us in this moment. So basically, I hear you saying is, um, I'm reflecting because I've learned this from Dr. Rock, how to reflect in my, my listening, make myself a better listener is that we want to make a habit of value-based choices. That's it. That's the habit we want to make. Gotcha. That's the habit That's we want to make. To learn how to make, exactly, learn how to make better choices and then do that intuitively. Like do that. Mm. Ooh. Yes. Right? Because like the food we eat and, and our exercise plans, those are actually complicated things, right? Those are not like flossing my teeth, I get. Like I can, or putting my keys away when I get home, like those I can start doing without thinking, but then suddenly like so many things change and happen. Uh, every, I'm my, my wife who took up soccer as a 40 year old, God bless her, uh, <laughs> for her ACL a oh, few no. months into her young soccer career, but she is motivated to get back and she had surgery this last week on her oh, ACL. Gosh. She's recovering very well. She had physical therapy yesterday and she can't drive. <laughs> she can't walk the dog. She can't do laundry. She can't do dishes. Like, I mean, not that she was doing all those things before we were doing them together, but now she can't do those things. And so I've had to make adjustments to my own self-care. I haven't said I'm not doing any self-care, right? But walking the dog is a form of, I mean, I really have to literally throw treats like down to get him to stop sniffing. <laughs> like, <I'm, laughs> we call them sniffer faris. I told yeah, you, I feel exactly. you, man. I'm like, this Every is not five minutes. The, the run I was trying to get in. <laughs> it's not. Oh and, and it's the movement that I can get in, right? So <laughs> right. that's the choice I'm making. My hat, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. So there's. There's personal value-based choices, and then there's choices that we make that we don't think about the repercussions for others in the family or our partners or spouses. <laughs> um, no, that well, that's awesome that she's willing to, to go out there, and unfortunate that she had that issue. She's Man. really motivated to get back to soccer. Oh. Like, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dr. Bach, didn't you say she was even running before she had surgery? Yeah, oh, okay. So, yeah. So, <laughs> so first had the injury so motivated when she first had the injury she was like she didn't even go to the doctor she was like oh, oh it's just I, I i and she I, is a doctor by the way yeah oh she's a, <laughs> she's a specialist but she's not a she's not but still a, it's just funny. but still and so she she said it's it's okay and then she sort of rested on it for a day or two and then 
she was like very visibly like had this weird limp that she was like, no, it's fine. It's fine. And then within like a week, she started running. And then after a few weeks, I'm like, you still have this limb. And she's like, oh, yeah. And she, and she was icing it. She's like, it gets kind of sore after my runs, it's like trail runs that she started doing again. And she went, I think she went back to soccer once or twice. Anyway, at that point, she went to go see someone. They got an MRI and oh. had fully torn ACL. <laughs> And she was running. That's yeah. and she was running. Like the I think the weekend before the MRI, she went. She told me she said, oh, "I went a six mile trail." Oh my gosh! I <laughs> surprised her knee was not like unstable. The surgeon with that. told me. Okay, my my wife <laughs> probably anyway. The surgeon told me he's like, "Oh, the the cartilage in the knee the, and the patella were kind of soft, which is what we see on people who have been very active on their knee when their ACL is torn. <laughs> and it'll get better. And there's no permanent damage. Anyway, that just shows. It's so funny. Anyway. But she so actually, can I say that I that for you. me, like, I don't know how I would have dealt with that. I would have certainly felt more pain and probably been like, oh my God, now I can't do this. Now I can't. I mean, you can spiral into like how that's such a big setback, but then very quickly she was like, okay, well, what can I do? Even now she's, she went to a physical therapist yesterday and she's like, let me learn these exercises as quickly as possible. Let me do, let me do what I can do. And I think it just gets back to, and you touched on this, Dr. Lori, it's like what, you know, learning from the experience, but then also asking yourself, like, what do I have control over now? Mm. You know, like you can look at a setback and say like, oh, this has happened to me. And I, and I, and, and now I and now I'm in this situation and I have no control, but that's obviously not the case. And so it's mm -hmm. really an opportunity to stop, reflect and ask, like, now what can I do? But what's really interesting is your wife's motivation is so tied to her, whether well, it's either enjoyment her or her, identifi her identification as I'm a soccer player. Yeah. I'm a runner. She's that's a runner soccer. and she's runner. now she's a soccer player. Yeah, exactly. And literally you it's like you're being pulled and you can't stop it. Right. So mm. if, you know, running is like that playing sports, having raised three kids that went through sports through high school, I mean, they totally, and then played intramurals in college, you know, and they, the value and enjoyment they get from that. So the same thing with eating a plant-based diet, I've done this for 11 years. The thought of not eating a plant-based diet right. just doesn't exist. Like that possibility doesn't exist. It it's doesn't. become a part of, yeah, it's become yeah. a part of your, Identity is what, I mean, it, it's written about in different ways, but in Atomic Habits, James Clear calls it identity-based habits. Mm -hmm. And it's what we talk about is like, we, we start with your why, you know, so who are you? Oh yeah, we had this wonderful, wonderful meeting as a medical group. Oh with, my goodness. Chad, and, I was better. and really, and Christina and I did this for a week. We asked all our groups to pose, to posit these two <laughs> questions. Who am I and what do I want? And it was remarkable, really, just hearing, you know, having everyone share, answer that question, think about that question, share. We had people even a week later that I've been thinking about that all week. Uh, and here and here's sort of what has come to mind. Um, but that know. gets to your values, right? It's like, yeah. who do you identify yourself as? Who am I? And what do I want? What do I value? Right. So this does go back to the values. Values based. And yeah. maybe, you know, when people ask who you are, you know, people say, I'm a doctor, I'm a student, I'm a whatever. That's what you do. That's not mm -hmm. who are, but who are you in your thoughts? Who are you inside of you? Like who's, who's the one observing all the mm -hmm. things that you do and all the different hats that you wear in a day that gets back to your true identity. Um, yeah. It's the values that make us act and do things that we would never think we could do. Like, you know, you hear those amazing stories of, people lifting heavy oh, yeah. cars off injury, you know, the, like they're yeah. like, or they'll go and do these amazing feats because they, they had to do it. Right. Those run into a burning building and save someone um, because you love them or do something to save their animal or love that. You right. know, that's where I feel like that's, that's the value that we need to get to. That's who you are. Right. That's, that's that piece. I don't know the mm -hmm. word, a good word for it, but think about it. I'll think about it. <laughs> That's like your core identity. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Beyond identity. It's like, yeah, it's like, who am I? And, and it honestly, it could be identity. It could be just who do I, what do I identify? I mean, it's a true self. Say, I'm a teacher. I'm a, 
you know, it was interesting, Christina remarked, I think you noted to the group, like so many people, their identity was tied to service. Yeah, um, almost yeah. every single one. Almost every single person in one of our groups, the identity was tied to service, which you, you, you just had, to, I love that you you heard that and called that out and and everyone reflected on that. That's yeah. really very interesting, but you can almost say that you are traits, right? So I am a person of compassion, of love, of, of service, of, you know, and, and I almost feel like we have a bookshelf of traits that we could identify, like, this is who the core of me is, where I'm built upon, it's the qualities, the characters of your being, right? Um, it might be a good activity to just I might actually even do that for myself, <laughs> you know, just writing down, you know, the mm -hmm. traits that, mm -hmm. that you value and that you think you align with. And then, like you said, evaluating your actions and do these actions align with mm -hmm. the values that I say that I want or I am. And that can be a good like exercise. Qualities, thing. values, characteristics oh. of you as a being right? Your being, who, who are you as a being? Yeah. And then making, you know, setting time to incorporate more things that maybe you realize, oh, I'm, you know, this is a value of mine, but I'm not cultivating that value or living that out and setting time aside to do more of those things. Like, I think the, when we had that circle, a lot of the patients were excited to a lot of their, what do I want was to help others in various ways. And some of them even said, the next week that they had done even more of that mm -hmm. <laughs> just that last week mm -hmm. because they had reflected on it and said, you know, that's really important to me. I'm going to start doing more of that. So. Yeah. I, I really like that. I, I, I feel because, you know, I come from a Christian background. One of the things that um, are often discussed is the qualities of God. So I feel like we're beings, like we're souls inside. And Anne asked, can you elaborate on who observes you in the mind? And I think maybe, Rocky might be more qualified because you do more oh. you do more meditation than I do, but I feel it's the it's the thing that watches. You know, when people say when you're meditating, you see thoughts come in and you just kind of watch them go and drift. I feel like we're that we're that mm -hmm. <laughs> we're the seat above all the things that are occurring, the chatter in our brain, our true being. We're not our thoughts, like because I can think I'm a pink elephant. Well, I'm not a pink elephant. I can see that, but you know, it's it's that. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. I feel like it's up here. That's why I'm doing that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know quite rock. Maybe you can share more. Yeah. Well, no, I it's, it's, it's a, it's such an abstract concept, but um, through meditation, you can kind of, as you start to observe your thoughts, you can ask yourself like, who is observing this thought? And there's no, there's no way to sort of say it, but then you sort of start to get to sense, Oh, I, there's this being. Mm -hmm. And, and I always say that's, I think why we're called human beings hmm. is right. That there's this, this beingness, you know, this, that's, that is the present moment being in the present moment is, is this noticing of not just what's going on inside us, but everything that's going on around. Um, hmm. If I lost if for a bad accident or something, and I lost a limb, for example, am I, you know, am, is my hand me? Is this is this me? But if I lost it, am I still me? That so similarly, like if if I lost this this body, am I, am I still me? Then what is me? What is me? It's 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 this you know, existential question, I think. <laughs> but, but anyway, that, and I don't, that may not answer your, your question, but. I like that though. I like how you related it to the human being and it's being in the sense of an act. Right. And so, mm. um, and she's asking for a book recommendation. Yes. Uh, Surrender is a great book. Um, and yeah. I love that. Um, a New Earth by Eckhart Tolle is one of my Sort of mm. thinking about ourself and yeah, the being part. I, I like that because your act. It's the verbiage. It's 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 just, it's a noun and an, an action of being present, being yeah. Um, because then it makes you think about other beings, right? The the, the other being. human beings, the animal beings, the 
plant beings, <laughs> right? They're, they're being and they're, you know, it's kind of silly how we say that, but it's, it's really true. I feel like it makes you more connected. Um, Cause when I went plant-based and we started learning about our food system and all the things, you start becoming aware of the ecosystem and that we're really part of this earth. We're not separate entities that are just kind of walking this earth. We're part of the system, mm -hmm. right? We're part of this living organism called earth. And so we have our place and we're just part of that entire being or system or whatever you want to call it. Um, it can go that, much deeper. <laughs> that reminds me actually, and to bring it back to setbacks, because you're, you're talking about this sort of interconnection. And one of the things before we got on, I said to Christina, I said, I would love if you shared um, self-compassion and maybe the self-compassion mm -hmm. break that you talk about. Uh, yeah. I was that. about yes. to, say, I was about to say that Dr. Rock. So yeah, kind of, totally bringing it back to the setbacks, like you, you just mentioned um, the human being. And there's a fantastic exercise by Dr. Kristen Neff called the self-compassion break. Um, she has it for free on her website. You can go and there's a guided meditation there. Um, but it's all about if you have, you know, a setback, you're suffering in some way, um, you say the following three phrases to yourself. Um, this is a moment of suffering. So you acknowledge, you, you know, stick, stay in the moment, acknowledge that this is a moment of suffering. And if suffering doesn't seem like a nice word for you, there's, she does give some um, other options. Um, this is a moment of stress. This is a moment of, um, you know, discouragement. You can use other words there if that doesn't feel right. Um, but then you go on to say suffering is a part of life, right? Like, the human experience is not going to just be all positive. We always have ups and downs. And so by saying suffering is part of life, like that just helps us to remember those other beings out there and we're not alone. Um, and then lastly, may I be kind to myself. And that's just a reminder to treat yourself like you would a friend. So if your best friend or maybe even think about if your daughter or son made the same mistake or setback that you did, what would you say to them? Mm -hmm. And would that be the same thing that you would say to yourself? Like mm -hmm. your automatic, what you would say to yourself? Could you even imagine saying that to your daughter or son? Most people will say, oh, absolutely not. I would never say that to my child. Well, why do we say it to ourselves? Um, and so this is a really fantastic exercise. Mm -hmm. um, you can do it just in a few moments. You can take 20 minutes to do it. You can take as long as you need. You just kind of repeat those three phrases. Is this a moment of, this is a moment of suffering. So acknowledging again, suffering is part of life. And then um, may I be kind to myself. So that's just a, a way, a practice of, of self-compassion and mindfulness that you can try. There's lots of other ones out there too, if that one doesn't work for you, but just a reminder to be kind to yourself. We're all human, we're all learning. Um, and then also to bring it back to what I think Dr. Marvis said earlier, um, when we have a setback, a lot of times we can learn from it. And so thinking about it in that way, what can we learn from this moment too? Yeah. And I think suffering, you know, there's, there's suffering in the sense we think it's all negative, but I almost feel like we can choose to suffer or we mm -hmm. can choose to learn. Right. So I love that. So that, I love that exercise. So like this is a moment of challenging, maybe take the word suffering and turn it into a learning or piquing your curiosity. This is a moment of learning, of challenge, of yeah. a moment of reflection for growth, you know, yep. versus the suffering. Cause when we pull, we get pulled, I think by certain words to feeling bad yeah. or feeling stress. Mm -hmm. um, so if we can change that word suffering, cause what we, you know, what always amazes me that people, for example, a parent who's lost a child or, someone who's going through a very difficult health circumstance or divorce or whatever, you know, things that we think would be, wow, that, that must be so hard, but they, they go through it and they're like at peace. Right. And I feel mm -hmm. like that's where that book's um, surrender is so powerful for me. It's really how you're framing the mindset and walking into a circumstance or dealing with a circumstance that's maybe pushed upon you unknowingly or I'm like, well, where'd this come from? It really is our choice, how we respond to anything, a comment, mm -hmm. something cutting us off on the highway to, you know, something much more dramatic happening in our life. So I, I really like that because you're taking time to be mindful of how not only is what's going on, but how can I respond? You can make a choice again, based on your values 
of how you want to be in this moment. Like, what do you want to be when you reflect on this moment? Was it a moment Mm. of stress and loss of control or one of choice and reflection of like, I'm going to learn from this. It may not be a perfect choice, right? We can't be a perfect choice, but it's based on my values. This is the best one I can do. Mm. And you can feel comfortable in the fact that you did the best you can. And I feel that's always a a great thing to remember Mm. as well. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. That Christina, thanks for sharing that. Um, very powerful tip and said that hit home. Thank you. Yeah. And Dr. Laurie, I, that, that was a wonderful reflection. I think a great way to end our conversation. And I also just want to point out if you, if you are dealing with setbacks, if you have dealt with setbacks, this is one of the things we excel at is working with you at Mora to really see it as what are the, what is the opportunity here? How can you navigate this in a way where you have control, you make choices that are in alignment with your values and ultimately take control of your health and live the life that you want to live. So mm-hmm. find us at mora.com. We have a new masterclass, uh, 11 week masterclass, weight loss masterclass that is free. And uh, we'll have the link down I here. I have the link here. Let me send it to you, Rock, and you can post it real quick. I will send that to you right now. And we, um, yeah, this class is a really amazing guys. We're getting so much amazing feedback and these guys worked really hard, um, and just created a wonderful tool for everyone. Um, where did you go? I didn't see the, I'm trying to, guys. where did you go? (laughs) Hold on one sec here. I have lost you all of a sudden. Um, hold on. I got to find the video. Oh, I'm going to put it in Slack. And for you. And then if you can share that to the live show. Sorry, guys. Here you go. Here it is. I put it in Slack for okay. you. And um, oh, there you are. I got it. Okay, cool. Got it. Okay. Um, uh, there we go. Okay. So we put that link down there in the uh, chat for everyone for our masterclass. You can find us at mora.com. And um, thanks to both of you uh, and all of you who listened and watched. Again, we're here every Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And um, appreciate your support. Share and share this. Uh, We are a a new form of medical uh, company, a new form of medical group that's really trying to spread lifestyle medicine the care that that really people need and want. And so uh, we appreciate your support and have a great day. And just real quick, um, we also use these episodes on the podcast. So if you go to um, Mora, uh, the Health and Mora podcast, you'll also can listen there if you're on the podcast side. Awesome. So yeah. Awesome. Yeah, please subscribe to that as well. And we will see you all back here next time. Take care, everyone.